Hello everybody, um, just thought I'd welcome you to another Talking Head episode of um, Living in a Van. Um, a few weeks back I did um, an episode about the not-so-glamorous van life. And in that episode I talked quite a bit about um, the realities of vanning and how hard it can really be if um, you're actually doing it full-time and you're not just doing it for fun and you're doing it not because you truly want to but because you have to. Well, this episode um, is geared mostly for beginners who are still contemplating living a van life. And um, I assume that at this point you've decided that this is something you really want to do. So we're going to go ahead and just point out some things that you might want to keep in mind and tips that might help you out. Um, the first and foremost is to know that uh, one of the biggest things that can um, make or break your van living experience is... Um, preparation. Um, the more prepared you are beforehand, the better off you're going to be. And by preparation, I don't mean just um, having a van, although that will help a lot, um, but knowing what to expect and setting aside funding, setting aside money, because that's what it really comes down to. Um, when you see that people have a, a, a rough experience or a hard time with living in a van, it's usually because some kind of um, disaster or catastrophe hit while they were on the road um, and they had issues with the vehicle or money. So the, the first thing that I'm going to recommend that you do if you are truly contemplating this is to plan. And by planning I mean figure out how much money you're going to need. Um, that includes money for purchasing the vehicle, setting it up, um, configuring it so you can live in it full time, and um, having money for daily living as well as emergency expenses. Now, how much you're going to need will vary from person to person because it depends a lot on um, what kind of vehicle you get, the um, the shape of the vehicle, how good you know it is, whether or not it's going to break down or not and um, your own skills, your mechanical skills. How good are you at um, repairing things mechanically? Um, if you can fix things yourself, you can get even a junkie vehicle and fix it up and save a lot of money that way. And if something happens, you just pay the cost of the actual repairs in terms of um, purchasing items that are needed for the repairs instead of paying a mechanic or a, a shop, an automotive shop to do the work. Most of the fees in automotive repair isn't in the repair, it's in the, or the items like the components, it's in paying the mechanic and the shop um, for the fees to do the repair because they have specialized skills and tools. So if you're mechanically inclined, living the van life might not be such a bad thing. I mean, when something comes up, you can fix it yourself. Um, but even if you're not mechanically inclined and you have time and um, can figure things out, YouTube is a fantastic resource. Um, you can Google almost, or, or YouTube or Google, um, almost any topic um, for repair items and whatnot, and chances are somebody online, possibly on YouTube, has videotaped how to do it, and they walk you through it step by step. Now, me, I'm not so mechanically inclined, otherwise, a little blue too right here would be um, fully functional um, for only a couple hundred bucks versus nearly at you know 800 or more dollars to pay a mechanic to do it which I'm not paying so right now I've been driving um, a little blue to my minivan um, converted camper here um, even though it's not running that well and, and eating gasoline because the computer is not working correctly anyhow so once you've um, started preparing and by that I mean making a list of what kind of vehicle you want to get and looking at the pluses and minuses to each kind. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about vehicles. Okay, if you are a single person and you're planning on mostly traveling, um, I actually recommend like a minivan uh, for several reasons. Uh, a minivan versus like a larger van and the reason for that is mainly has to do with um, stealth capability as well as um, gasoline usage. Typically, it's far cheaper 
and easier to drive a minivan around and use it if you have to do stealth camping. Um, for those of you who don't know what stealth camping it is, is it is essentially uh, making your vehicle look just like a regular vehicle so you can park almost anywhere overnight and people won't suspect that you're living in it. Now, if you have a budget and um, you, you can actually travel and you're not confined to staying in a city or a particular area, then you have the maximum flexibility. You can travel and pretty much um, camp at various um, government lands, I think called BLM lands, um, Bureau of Land Management, and they're essentially free. So you can park and stay overnight for like a couple days or even a week or, or more and just continue to travel around and see the country. And that's a great way to see the country on a very limited budget. The only expenses you're going to have is um, your vehicle expenses, food expenses, and um, expenses for doing things along the way. And if you manage to travel and live like that, that is terrific. That would make this uh, lifestyle something fantastic. And um, it is, I think, a dream that a lot of people have. The reality, though, is if you have to um, do this because you are trying to save money or you are not earning that much and you still are trying to earn money so you can begin your travels, so you're kind of living in the van um, while you're working, um, it gets a little tougher because you're pretty much probably going to have to stealth camp. And in order to do that, you've got to have a vehicle that looks like a normal vehicle on the outside. Um, I think that a, a lot of vanners, full-timers, that live full-time, they actually like those cargo vans, those white cargo vans. Um, and if they can afford it, the sprinter ones, because they have high ceilings. The, the problem with those is, one, um, the sprinters tend to be kind of expensive. And the cargo vans, they do look stealth in the sense that they're all over the place and you know they don't have windows to deal with but to me they kind of stand out in the sense that you know if you're parked in a residential area it might get kind of suspicious um, if you're stealth camping in a place like Walmart it may be okay because they're still generic but me personally if I had to get a full-size van I would probably get um, a one of those um, custom vans you know with the high top with windows just because I like to have windows but the windows would definitely be um, tinted black so you can have curtains on the inside so people can't just look in but on the outside I keep it looking very generic now some people who live full-time they feel like I see this a lot um, with people who um, are contemplating the van life and they talk about wanting to install solar power and a refrigerator and air conditioning and all that good stuff the problem you're going to realize real quick is that, um, one, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of electricity to run a refrigerator, much less an air conditioner. So um, the idea of trying to install solar panels on your van, unless you have like a huge gigantic rig, like a real full-blown RV, a class, what is it, a class A RV, um, and even then it probably won't have enough power. You have to have a humongous amount of battery packs, like battery storage, to store that electricity to run stuff like air conditioning. So um, the plan to use air conditioning in a van is really not practical. Not unless you're going to be able to run it off a generator. Now the problem with generators is one, typically they run off gasoline and so they're gonna be they're gonna cost some money to run. But the bigger problem is this they make a lot of noise even the quiet ones um, and you kind of have to mount it outside your vehicle you don't want to have um, fumes coming inside because you'll get um, carbon monoxide poisoning and kill yourself so um, I personally would not recommend installing air conditioning for use unless you know that you're gonna be off um, off the grid living in the boonies where you can run the generator and generate electricity or for me for stealth camping if I were in a city I would mount my air conditioner so it doesn't look obvious so it doesn't come out until nighttime when I actually use it so that on the outside my vehicle looks normal 
but um, the air conditioner would not be running off a generator it'd be running off shore power and what I mean by shore power is this if you parked at um, somebody's house either a friend's house or somebody you're renting a parking spot from and you don't make it obvious that you're living in your van you might be able to run a power cord you know thick um, rated um, power cord that's designed to be used outdoors from their house to your van and if you did that the van is essentially like a room in a house you know you have multi-plug outlet in here you could even hook up regular lamps you could run air conditioning you could run your computer laptop watch TV all the amenities of a normal house um, other than maybe a bathroom unless you have a small portable bathroom that you use inside um, you could even run water like a hose with water so you can take a shower and even get a drink and whatnot that to me is the most ideal way to live in a van if you are confined to living in a city and you have to um, stay parked in that you know in a particular area so you can go to work so your expense would be very minimal like I would think that you could probably rent a parking spot on somebody's um, driveway or in their yard for a hundred dollars a month or so and for that they'll probably let you hook up to their electricity and maybe even get some running water so for a hundred dollars rent you could live each month and then go to work and save your money till you have enough money money to actually make your trip if that's what your goal is or if you're saving money to buy a house or whatever that's an ideal way to live in a van um, the other thing that that comes up a lot is um, basically some people go all out and get all excited about this but they've never really done it you know being in a, um, a van is a very small confined space I this this go around before I um, got married and moved back into an apartment with my wife I lived in the van full-time for roughly nine months um, prior to that I lived in the van on and off for several months at a time and mostly for traveling but um, what I found is that in, in a van, you really don't want to live in the van. You kind of want to sleep in the van, maybe use the van for cooking, but you want to live outside of the van. So whenever possible, I would hang out at the beach or at a park, go hiking, go bike riding, um, do all the fun things, okay? And that would make living in a van ideal because you can travel and do things. You're... you're basically saving um, rent what you would pay for, for rent or mortgage for an apartment or a building or a house so all those funds that would go towards um, electricity um, running water and the building itself kind of evaporate disappear but they do get replaced with um, typically increased gasoline cost because you, you're probably going to be driving around a lot more. If you have a um, parking spot that you can use, like for rent, for like $100 a month or so, that could be your rent, $100 a month. And if they give you electricity and water with that, that's a very uh, controlled budget. So whatever you make beyond the $100, you get to spend on travel and doing things. Of course, you continue have to, you'll continue to have to pay your car insurance. So that's another expenditure. Um, depending on how you eat and cook, if you've set up your van so you can cook inside the van, um, that will certainly save you a lot of money. Um, eating out is very expensive. So having the ability to cook food saves you a lot of money. But the problem you're going to run into is because you're in a limited space and you have limited um, power capabilities. A refrigerator is a luxury item now if I was parking at a um, friend's house and I had access to shore power refrigeration is actually not a luxury it's um, something that you can easily get you can get one of those small college fridges you can get them for about $80 to $100, 110 dollars brand new maybe even find a used one on Craigslist for 25 to 40 dollars you know, the little small ones, dorm fridges is I guess what they're called. And you can store cold items in there, food, and that can save you money. If you're having to stealth camp, on the other hand, a refrigerator 
is a luxury item. Um, a lot of people promote or push using the Dometic um, fridges and freezers because they're designed to run off 12 volts. But those things are expensive as all heck. I think even the cheapest models are like four or $500. And it's essentially just a ice box that runs off 12 volts. Um, and believe it or not, it would still use a lot of power. You have to have, in, in that case, you have to have a large battery bank and you probably need solar panels to charge it up. But if you're running solar panels, then you just lost your stealth. So you can see it's a contradiction. If you're wanting to live in a van in a city and you have huge solar panels all over your roof and you probably need several of them, like at least 200 watts or more to try to keep that battery bank charged up so you can run the fridge every night or freezer, you don't have stealth capability. I think your money is better spent um, trying to find a spot that you can pay to rent to park and with electricity and running water because you essentially are converting your van into an RV. As a matter of fact, your host might even let you use their shower facilities. You know, it may be worth 150 bucks to do that. Now, the other thing that you can do to um, help with stuff like uh, staying clean is. Well, if, if you're parked at someone's house, you can get their water and use their water and have a little shower if you're in the backyard and nobody can see. You know, I um, had configured little blue two with a shower when I first started because that was the plan was we were going to stop at friends' houses to use access to their running water and whatnot. But um, if you're having to stealth camp in a city, then... Your best bet is probably going to be signing up with a, a gym of some sort, like Planet Fitness or some other chain um, gym where you can take free showers. Well, it's not free, but for the Planet Fitness, if you're staying in one town, I think they have like a $10 a month plan where you can just take showers, all the showers you want. If you're planning on traveling around, which I recommend, then you want to go for their gold plan. I mean, not their gold, their black card. Which is like, I think there's an initial sign-on fee of like 20 to $40. And then it's 20, roughly $20 or so a month. And you can travel around and use shower facilities and different planet fitnesses. There's a cap of like 10, 10 uses per month at a planet fitness that's not your home planet fitness. But that was never really a problem for me um, when I was um, working full time in my van and traveling throughout Florida because I typically stayed in an area for about one to two weeks and then moved on to another location. And even when I stayed like past the two weeks period, like sometimes I stayed for two and a half, three weeks, um, I just showered at different planet fitnesses. Usually in a lot of metropolitan areas, there's several planet fitnesses. Um, just even in Brevard County, there's one in um, Palm Bay and there's one in Melbourne. Now, the one in Palm Bay, I think, is my uh, my home one, so I can use it unlimited. And if I were just staying here in this area, I could just pay the $10 a month plan. But I'll still keep my, um, my black card plan because when I travel, I want to be able to access pretty much free showers. And they're nice showers. It's hot showers. Um, the other thing you're going to find is that um, living in a van, you're going to appreciate things like showers and electricity on demand. Um, now, as far as preparing, once you've set your budget and you know how much you can afford for your vehicle and what kind of vehicle you want, um, if you find that you're not going to do a lot of traveling and you want a little bit more comfort, then you might want to get a full-size van. Um, and like I said, a lot of people like those um, those white generic um, work vans because they're all over the place and there's no windows so it's hard for people to look in as long as you don't make noises or make it stand out you know you can be very stealth with it me like I said if I were going to go full full size and live in it full time I would probably get a conversion van um, just a regular full size conversion van and convert that because then you can get like probably get a queen size bed in there You know, you could probably hold two people comfortably. Now, 
once you've got your van decided and you have your budget so you know how much money you can afford to, to buy the van and pay to live each month as well as have money set aside for repairs I recommend having at least several thousand dollars um, typically if it's a major repair and it doesn't even seem like major it seems like almost anything that happens you're going to spend roughly between eight hundred to three thousand dollars to get something repaired so you need to set aside at least that much if not more um, what else that's pretty much it um, as far as the actual build and conversions there's a lot of videos on different channels on YouTube so all you have to do is just type in like van life or living in a van homemade minivan homemade um, van homemade campers homemade um, van campers home you know or camping vans um, and you'll get a lot of ideas if also if you're not familiar um, there is a group um, called living in a van it's a group that I founded on um, Facebook so just send a um, request to join look up living in a van make sure that you go to the group not the page there's a page called living in a van which is also me um, there was a page I put together before I realized the difference between a, a Facebook group and a Facebook page but I still put information up on the Facebook page that I think are interesting for banners and other people who want to live off the grid um, and be sustainable and as self-sufficient as possible so I put cool links to cool videos and whatnot on there but as far as having access to actual banners or other people who are interested in this lifestyle I recommend um, joining a Facebook group um, such as the living in a van group and if you do you'll have access to our resources there um, in the living in a van group we have um, extensive extensive file section that I put together that has like a lot of links that talk about everything from building your own power system to solar installation to battery types to um, different links to other people who have posted their links for their YouTube or their web page or um, whatever their other links that they've provided in addition to that you have access to uh, I think we're nearly I think we're close to 5,000 four or five thousand people in the group right now so those are all people of varying um, backgrounds some are full-timers who have been doing this for more than a decade others are newbies and others are wannabes and it's okay um, you know you don't have to be living in a van to join the living in a van group if you're interested in the lifestyle and want to learn more it's a good opportunity to um, ask questions you know you can post there and, and ask questions and um, more than likely someone on there will have enough experience and background to be able to answer give you an answer from first-hand experience and that's pretty much it. Um, other issues that you're going to deal with um, have to do with getting mail. Um, what I recommend is trying to find a friend or somebody where you can use that as your home address, your base address for having mail sent to. I think on the Living in a Van page or group, you know, on the Living in a Van group, I think there's a resource on there that shows you how you can set up a remote uh, um, address for mail. Uh, essentially what you do is you establish a residence in another state uh, a state that's friendly to um, RVers and banners and you set up a PO box and you can have your mail sent there and I guess you could um, go by there every so often to pick it up or possibly have instructions for them to forward it to you now forwarding mail from what I understand I should know better since I was a mailman but I think you can have mail forwarded to any um, post office throughout the United States um, so let's say you set up um, a P.O. box and then you contact the, the P.O. box and tell them that they can forward your mail to the Melbourne post office here in Florida and you give them the address and on the, the mail you have instructions for them to hold it for you for pickup and then you show up at the mailbox I mean at the, the post office there to pick it up and show them your ID um, I think they'll hold the mail for a couple days maybe even as much as a, a couple weeks because I know we used to hold mail when I was a mail carrier but you can just send a general delivery to that post office and have them hold it for you to pick up in person with your ID so that's one way of getting mail um, medications and stuff 
will have to be you're gonna have to stop by to pick it up or have it sent to the PO box or have it sent to whatever um, post office you're currently at and you kind of have to wait there to pick it up let's see what else I'd recommend online banking so you can always have access to your funds um, phone services and internet through the phone becomes kind of important so trying to get a, a, a decent plan that doesn't charge you an arm and a leg and truly gives you unlimited access is the best but you gotta watch out for a lot of these um, phone companies they, they claim to have unlimited internet access on their phone but what they do is when you hit like four gigabytes or six gigabytes or whatever of data usage they throttle you down to the point where the internet usage is useless it, you can't even access a web page so double check on that you might want to look up some reviews and see how their unlimited plan actually works um, just to give you a rough idea um, one gigabyte is like watching one or uh, it's like watching two movies maybe three movies if you squeeze in with compression so if you stream like two movies you've already gone through one gigabyte of data so you know that means with four gigabytes you can watch eight movies that's it so and, and that doesn't even account for stuff usage like when you access like Facebook or YouTube like even watching YouTube videos can get kind of expensive so um, being able to access Wi-Fi like a lot of the um, internet service providers like Bright House and stuff they have a deal with other providers that let you log into um, roaming Wi-Fi like like even at this park I think that out here I'm, I'm currently at Crane Creek Promenade Manatee Observation Area, which is just off US 1, next to New Haven Avenue in Melbourne. I think at this spot, I think I actually have internet access if I want, like wireless, because um, of Bright House. Having internet through Bright House allows me to patch through and get free Wi-Fi at various locations. So, <clears throat> having access with, to Wi-Fi on your phone allows you to have free internet, pretty much. You know, like I can access internet from Walmart or from um, Chick-fil-A or other restaurants and whatnot. So you don't want to use your um, phone data usage. You want to use Wi-Fi whenever possible. So internet access is, I think, important. Um, what else? Those are the big things that I can think of. Um, the other thing is to stay positive. And, um, you know, you've got to be the type that doesn't mind a bit of hardship I think that the more money you have the less hardships like inversely proportional the more money you have the less the hardship will be living in a van because obviously anything that comes up you can just throw money at it and fix it for the most part it's um, when you're trying to make it on a limited budget that it becomes an issue um, so learning to deal with stuff like bathroom um, it's possible to get a portable portalette to put into your van whether it's a full-size or minivan but it takes a lot of space and you also have to kind of um, plan where you're going to dump it and whatnot you know like at a rest stop or bathroom somewhere and uh, of course you're going in the bathroom in your little limited space where you eat and sleep I don't really like to do that so I try to always park um, somewhere where I have access to an actual toilet, you know, like a 24-hour Walmart or something, where if I needed to go, I could get out there and go. Um, I'm trying to think of any other issues that that are common issues, um, anyway, but I don't really see any. You know, the other thing is just, um, I, I guess the biggest thing tip that I can offer you, for you is if you are truly, truly contemplating doing this. My advice is this, before you invest a lot of money and time converting a vehicle and whatnot, um, try renting a minivan or a full-size van and throw in an air mattress or um, a little mattress into the back and take it out for a weekend and camp out in the city somewhere if you're, doing, if you're planning on doing stealth. If you're planning on the, the um, country and doing camping and stuff, you can go out there too. But go out there and try to live 
in your van without it all de rigged out and decked out and everything for at least a day and then if you can maybe a week to get a true taste as to what it's like before you decide to go all in um, because you might find that you really um, can't stand this lifestyle <laughs> but then again you might find you love it um, I think I think living in a van forces you to um, shift towards minimalism because you find that you don't have a lot of space so you end up getting rid of a lot of things I do not recommend um, getting a storage unit to store your items unless of course you're doing the van thing on a temporary basis you're not planning this as a total lifestyle you're not fully committed but I know people who live in a van and yet they pay hundreds of dollars to have storage for their items that they're not using I don't understand and they'll pay for it for years and years and years which to me doesn't make sense I'm like if you're gonna do that one why not get an apartment so you can just live there but but two if you um, got rid of all those items you could take that money and use it to get a better van and also have some more money and three if you decide you want to get into a house later you can just buy all those items again if you pay let's say two hundred dollars a month for storage of items in a year that's two thousand four hundred dollars let's say you do that for five years goodness that's ten thousand dollars for your furniture you know um, you could buy all new stuff when after 10 years, I mean after five years why uh, keep it in storage and have it get all moldy and mildewy and stuff and you know but that's just my my thinking but um, you probably want to work on trimming your your items you know your materials uh, you're not gonna have that much room for clothing so plan on getting rid of a lot of clothes and shoes and things like that uh, and you, what you're going to find though is that truly once you get into it and you start living in the van you don't need those items anymore it kind of does free you in the sense that like I can go to a store now and I don't feel like I have to buy anything <laughs> it's like I found that I don't need anything all I really need is a roof over my head to protect me from the elements and some food to eat so I'm not hungry and some water to drink and and of course gasoline and insurance and stuff to keep the van going but other than that well and for me child support <laughs> but other than that um, I don't really need much and it is kind of liberating you know you no longer feel like you have to work and work and work for a mortgage or rent for a place that you don't even get to stay in and enjoy because you're constantly out there working so if you have any questions or comments and stuff um, go ahead and feel free to post them I'll try to address them in a future video because this video is like ultra long I think a lot longer than it should be but I thought it was worth doing because um, I think my other video was a bit discouraging and stuff, but there are people who still want to do it. And if you want to do it, by all means, I think you should go for it. Um, it will change your life, for better or for worse. <laughs> Until next time, everybody, have a great day.